Triton, Robbins, KDT, Vasudevan, Parks, Bailey, Davidson, Holland, Shaw's, Opighai. If these are names of books that you've heard of and you wanted to read but were intimidated by the sheer size of them, then this video is definitely for you. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Do not judge my hippie look. I thought I was going to go out but then I really wanted to record before that so yay. Anyways, this video is something that a lot of you have been requesting. So this is all about how I've consistently read the big books, the standard books from first year till fourth year and how they did not drain me out and in fact helped me to an incredible amount of extent. The reason I keep saying standard books this, standard books that is primarily based on one and only one thing that is trust. I need to have a lot of trust in the information that is going into my head and somehow I can only trust the information that has been standardized which is why I find it easier to read standard books. And if you want to do that too, you can do so in four simple, I would like to say simple, but it's not that simple, but four steps which are sequential and which will really, really, really help you. This books aside because um, they're really taking up space and let's get into this video. Something other than trust is also the fact that, bhai, you don't have to read the whole book. You do understand that, right? And somehow, you don't realize this, but in books like Davidson, the actual topics are very shortened and they're really, really easy to read and comprehend and understand. So just give it a chance. The first stage of this is annotation. So this starts in class and the primary stage is basically listening to class. If you have a good class, if you have a good PPT, listen to class, look at the PPT and if you can side by side, either underline it in the standard book itself or underline or make your own notes. So first, for the first three years, first, second and third, it was very easy to follow up with the class and with the PPT. In fourth year, it's a little difficult. I do not like that bike. In fourth year, it's a little difficult because they teach from absolutely everywhere. So in fourth year, I decided to make class notes. Okay, just do, jot down whatever is important, whatever you thought they've taught. So this is your first stage and you've already done your first stage. That is on the same day they've taken the class. Second stage is of your first complete reading. So this has to be done on the same day as the class has been done. So you finish your classes for the day, you've come back. Um, let's say they've taught you pheochromocytoma, right? You've come back, uh, you've opened Davidson, or let me make it a little easier for you. Let's say uh, you've come back, you've opened Guyton, they've taught you NMJ, Neuromuscular Junction. This particular step takes a little more time than the other steps. Go through everything you've annotated in class and all the paragraphs above and below it to get a good understanding of what this topic is about. Try to understand it in your own words. You can take half an hour, one hour, two hours, how much ever time you want to completely understand it. You can supplement it with a video, you can watch Marrow along with it, you can do whatever you want. But the main goal of this reading is to understand, not memorize, just understand. What I do other than this is also make some personal annotation in the book other than the ones that I've made in class because I like to read while underlining. And another great thing about these standard books are they have incredible diagrams. So please go through all the diagrams during this reading only. So look at the diagram, understand the diagram, go below and read the description of the diagram and try to make maximum sense of it. Now your one, stage one and stage two are kind of done here. Now you're moving on to stage three. This stage three is something that comes, let's say a month or two, or let's say two, three months after you've done this first reading. This is when uh, you're like, okay, exams are kind of sort of coming close, but they're uh, they're around one two months away this second reading actually takes half an hour lesser but this second reading is what you need to do in order to make this standard book and this big book easier for you to write answers so in the second reading you will definitely find out points that you've missed you will find out some keywords that you know are going to be useful for your answer and most importantly in this second reading what i do is i think of the kind of questions that might be asked in the exam i think of the kind of things that I need to remember and I make points. So I'm going to show you an example of this by showing you how one of my book looks. Hi, I forgot to record that last night, but uh, I have one book here. I have Robbins here. So I'm going to show you what I mean by uh, making points. So clearly you can see like three, four colors here, right? That means I've read it three, four times. Not just that, um, when I, whatever I've read and whatever I feel like is important, I make like points like this here and not just points like that. I also, okay, you can see one, two, three. 
I also um, point it within the paragraph itself so that I know exactly what to read, when to read during the exam. That's essentially, and if you can see, I haven't really read the whole book. Bhai. I've only actually, actually read what they've taught in class. All of these don't get intimidated by big books. Okay. Yeah. See. Oh yeah, sticky notes are great, but I couldn't be too consistent with them also, so it's okay. I told you about practicing diagrams and making simpler diagrams for yourself. Reading what's under the diagram, that is super important. And well, this is this is it. This is how my books usually look like. Can't believe I'm opening this after too too long. Sticky notes, diagrams, knowing the diagrams, super important, super important. That's it. These points are to ease out my reading in my last and final revision. Other than this, I also do active recall during this reading where I try to remember as much as I can of the previous first reading that I did. And remember when we just saw the diagram last time, this time I practice the diagram. I practice it separately. I try to draw it by myself. And the last one and my favorite one is when you have decently consolidated not just the concept but a few bits and pieces of memorization things from this topic. This is 10 days before the exam or 20 days before the exam where you're doing another revision of it. And this one is pure, complete, active recall. You open the topic. Actually, no, you close the topic. You take a piece of paper. You try to remember everything you can about this topic. You try to explain it to yourself. You try to explain it to your friend or you just call your mom up and just be like, okay, I'm gonna explain something to you. You have to listen. Stuff like that. And in this, in this fourth revision, you're also trying to draw these diagrams without looking at them. So what you're doing in this one is making yourself a little more exam ready because no matter what, I get it, understanding and concepts and clinical application is everything, but for exams, you need this final fourth reading where you're doing complete absolute active recall. Now, let's say it's a day before exam. Everyone's like, how are you gonna sit and read these big ass books? I'm gonna tell you how I sit and read these big ass books. Number one, remember I told you I made these pointers, these exam pointers. I will only and only read those. I will read definitions. I will read these things. That's it. The only things that are volatile and I'm going to tend to forget. And while I'm reading these, I'm taking a separate notebook and writing down everything that I feel like I might forget. And this is like a 10 page document that I'm going to read an hour before exam so that every single volatile thing is now in my head. Before the exam, other than this, I'm going to flip through the diagrams. I'm just going to look at them and hope that my short term photographic memory or something works and I'll remember it in the exam. If you made any notes in stage one, stage one is your first reading. I tend to make notes either in stage one or stage two of my reading so that I can re read or revise it right before my exam. So if you've made any notes for a topic that is too complicated or you've made notes from a video, you can go through those notes. So yeah, that's it. Before an exam, this is all I read. And that is why I'm able to get enough sleep and, you know, not panic too much, too much before an exam because you know that the concept is solid in your head. You're just revising things that you might tend to forget. That's it. You know, I, the, my favorite part about reading these book, big books again and again is I use a different color every time I read it. So they're like four or five colors all over my book and it looks cute like little holy. Anyways, the point is I've used the same exact dot formula for almost every book obviously it varies with each subject but a similar way and approach to things for every book in mbbs and it's worked out incredibly well for me not just by reflecting in the way my results have been in the past four years but also because i am very confident in myself when it comes to clinical application having my theory backed up having a baseline knowledge of all my theory and not just that i was confident enough to give usmle step one only after finishing around 47% of you world. That is just, just because I've read these books and I've consolidated these topics again and again in my head. And most importantly, and my favorite thing that it has done is it's give, given me enough confidence to answer in class. And that's the best way to learn in my opinion. When I say this, I don't mean that you can't read other easier books. I've used Prasad's for biochemistry. I've used Shanberg for ph pharmacology as and when required. These are amazing books that you can definitely trust. Don't shame yourself if you think that you can't read a big book. If the way your brain works is different, it's different. I can't read the smaller books that well because they're not written in the way that I understand. They're written in points. I like to read paragraphs. They are missing out on certain points and that makes me feel like I have some knowledge gaps. So that is just the trust factor that I don't have in certain books. 
but again it's completely on you if you want to read these books that this is the formula that i've used and it's worked in my favor but if you want to read other standardized good books like prasad's and shanbag and mantappa and you know a lot of these that are there then you can definitely go for it because at the end of the day whatever is easy for you the best way for you to learn is all on you so take all that i've said with a pinch of salt don't worry you don't have to read the whole book you just have to read what they teach you that's it and you'll be good if you want to read more than that then if you have the time bhai go for it but uh, i personally didn't have the time whatever i had to read extra i read it during mle or i watched a video for it that's it and thank you so much for watching i will be coming up with more videos slowly slowly internship is hectic and i will definitely be making lesser videos than what i hoped i would but uh, stay tuned because love you all bye bye